What's going on guys, Ballas Phoenix here, and today we're taking a quick look at my new main in Season 4, the Shaman. We'll go over playstyle and all that fun stuff with the character. I'll try to pack as much gameplay as possible into this video, and here soon, I'll post one of my live recorded tutorial videos that I typically do at the start of every season when we get new characters. If you're new to my channel, you can check out the ones I did last season by clicking the icon in the top right hand corner of this video so you can get an idea of what to expect with those. Anyway, let's talk about this girl. For starters, the shaman is this season's assassin character. She wields a kukri knife and a hatchet, and brings to the table a never-before-seen game mechanic, Blood Trance. While the enemy is bleeding, Blood Trance is active. The bleed can either be from an attack the shaman inflicted, or an outside source like a nail bomb, a PK stab, or Nobushi bleed attack. While in Blood Trance, the shaman is able to heal a small amount of HP with every hit landed, and her pounce attack goes from being a shove to a tackle that throws the enemy to the ground and deals massive damage while healing the shaman and completely restoring stamina. It's very similar to Shigoki's Demon Embrace, except this one is way easier to land. The trade-off, though, is that it doesn't do as much damage. It won't kill the enemy if you're in a critical state. But that being said, it's still an incredibly strong move because you can feint it, and even if you miss, you can press the guard break button again to pounce a second time with a very small recovery window. On top of this, her feint and soft feint games are incredible. Any heavy opener can be canceled into a bleed stab that can come from whatever direction you want it to. So you heavy attack right and soft feint to a bleed stab that comes from the top or whatever combination of that you can think of. She also has a forward dash heavy attack like many characters in the game, except this one can be canceled and for the first time ever, you can make this jumping attack come from any of the three stance directions. The Shaman also has the ability to soft faint heavy attacks into a guard break, similar to how the Centurion works. And another little trick she has is turning any heavy finisher that comes from the left into an unblockable that she can let fly, dodge out of, or soft faint into a guard break. Additionally, if you land the first light attack in a chain and don't change the stance on the second one, it's guaranteed, much like the Orochi's top light, except this light attack can be initiated from any stance, and then you can cap it off with a heavy finisher. Lastly, her zone, which is very similar to Berserker's, can be cancelled after the second hit, or cancelled after the second hit into a bleed stab that comes from whatever direction you want it to, so yeah. So far on paper, she seems strong as hell, and, you know, she is, in practice. Of the two characters this season, she is definitely the strongest of the two, hands down, and I think she might even be a little too strong. Let me elaborate on that. Firstly, like all assassins, she's got a side dash attack. It's a heavy, and it does 25 damage. It's also in the neighborhood of 500 milliseconds, so it comes out fast, and does a bar of damage to any given character. Secondly, she's got around 110 health, and with healing abilities on top of that, she can be almost a little too sturdy. I think for a start, they could just drop her health pool down a little bit, but thirdly, the pounce. It's got insane tracking, comes out fast, is cancelable, and if you're bleeding, it does about two bars of damage and heals the shaman for a ton. Now, it's a little early to say, but after 20 hours on this character so far in early access, I feel like she's gonna need some tweaks, otherwise she's pretty much unstoppable in the right hands. Overall though, design-wise, I feel like with the two characters this season, the For Honor is moving in the right direction in terms of its character design. Both the Shaman and the Aramusha have ready access to soft feints, an unblockable, and a few other tools to help them adapt on the battlefield. The only problem is, the older characters in the game are slow to receive changes and playing them after playing these guys almost makes you feel like you're playing For Honor too. The old characters really just don't stack up to these new guys when it comes to feel and mix-up potential and just mechanics overall. But for now, that is all I have to say on the Shaman. Remember though, I'll be following this video with a detailed live guide on how all this stuff works and some tricks that I found in my playtime with her, so stay tuned. And if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, drop a like down below and for more For Honor coverage, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon so that you never miss a new video. Until next time, though, I'm Bows Phoenix. I'll see you at the next one. And as always, thank you so much for watching.